So we've built a, a four next loop uh, with a dynamic reference. So Excel can understand uh, the range um, that we're referring to. And if, if there's more data added or taken away, our code is going to be able to handle that. So we've created the loop. The next step is to tell Excel what to do to each cell. We've specified a range of cells and said do something to each cell. Now we've got to specify exactly what we want to do. So let's get back to the spreadsheets. Uh, it's a good idea now to just maybe refresh ourselves what we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to cleanse this data here and we're going to cleanse the data by checking that each item of data in this column appears in the name list. Okay, so these, these are the names and then we want to check that uh, each of these items of data appears in the name list because it may be there's misspellings or, 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 or some kind of data issue. So that's what we want to do. Go through the data, check that all the, all the names are correct and then uh, where there's problems, have those problems flagged up. It's going to save us a lot of time. So how to do that? Well, as always, it's good to combine worksheet formulae with code to get loads done. And what will be a good formula to check that an entry in a cell appears in a list somewhere else? To check that an entry in a cell appears in a list somewhere else. What would be a good formula to do that? Well, maybe you're familiar with count if. So in this cell, we're going to put the items of data and then we're going to build a count if formula. Count if requires two elements. Uh, the first is range. And for range, let's say B, B. So if, um, in fact, that's not the right sheet. So let's go to the right sheet, which is the name list. So the range should be the name list here. Okay, we're going to make the assumption that this list isn't going to get any bigger. But if the list did, did get longer, then we'd have to adjust uh, uh, that reference. Okay, so that's our range and then our criteria. Um, that's the cell where we're going to just drop in uh, the data from, from, from the column on this sheet. Okay, if it's not clear yet, don't worry, it'll become clear as we go along. Uh, so I can just reference that cell. And then the formula is returning a one and that's saying um, Julia appears once in, in the name list, in this, in, in this range, okay? We can test that if we misspell uh, Julia, then we can see that uh, the formula is returning a zero. That's because uh, Julia, as I spelled it, doesn't appear in the list. Okay, and that's how COUNTIF is working. It's counting uh, how many times an entry appears in a specified range. Okay, that's going to be useful to us because if the data is inaccurate, if it's misspelled, then the COUNTIF formula is going to, going to return a zero. So we've set up a mechanism in the spreadsheet for checking um, for checking each piece of data, so we're well on the way uh, with the data cleansing. Okay, so now if we go back to the code, maybe you can kind of develop an idea in your mind what we're going to do. We've set up this mechanism uh, in the spreadsheet here. So the next step is going to be to get every piece of data uh, into, this, into this cell to check that it, that it appears in the name list. Okay, so it's always important to have an idea in a logical sense, what you're going to do, the steps we're trying to work through. They're the steps we're trying to work through. Um, so for each uh, Chris cell, so back to our loop, um, we want to say make this range, which is E11, make this range equal to the value in the cell. Yeah, make range E11 equal to the value in the cell. We can do that by saying range 11 dot value equals Chris cell dot value. Okay. So now we can test it and, and we would expect um, every time we run through the code, we would expect the value in um, cell E11 to change and to work down that list. Okay, that's not clear. Don't worry. Let's just work through it. Okay, so I'll put a stopping point in there and I'm just going to play the code. There we go. So we can see that um, 
the value in the cell is changing and it's just working, working down the list. Okay, so Excel is looping through the loop uh, as we specify and just, just working down the list. Okay. So the next step, we'll do one more step in this video. The next step is, well, if, if um, the value in this cell appears in the name list, then there's no problem. Then that data is absolutely fine. The, the name's been spelled correctly. The problem is going to occur if the data in the data list does not appear in the name list. So that's the logic we're looking for. And how would that problem translate itself in the spreadsheet? Well, we know if we make a spelling mistake here, let's say Eric instead of Erica, then count if, the countif formula is going to return a value of zero because it hasn't found Eric in the list that it's looking at. So that's the logic. Um, if this cell equals zero, if cell E12 equals zero, then there's a problem and we want to take uh, some kind of action. Okay. So let's put another line of code in to do that. So what kind of code would we need? We're trying to say, um, if a certain condition is met, then do this. Okay, we're going to need some kind of conditional statement, which means an if statement. So let's say if range E12, this is, equals zero, then there is a problem. Yeah. So I've just used an inverted comma to, to put a, a, a comment in there. Okay, if and then if. And I forgot to put the then in there. Okay. So again, you can see I create, I open the if statement and then closed it straight away. That's good practice uh, because if statements, they can cause problems if you don't close them properly. So I've closed it straight away. That's not going to be a problem. Okay. So, so we've got a line, uh, a line of code saying if there's a problem, then do something. We're not going to go too far into that in this video. We'll save that for the next video. But let's just see if it's working. And if there's a problem, if the name doesn't appear in the list, then we're going to just get a message box to flag to um, flash up, and it's going to, and we're going to make the, the message box say the the name, so the value in the cell, which is the name, and to say the cell reference. Okay, Chris cell dots address that would be. That should work. I think you can just about see that. I'll move that across. There we go. Okay, so we're saying if the name doesn't appear in the list, if there's a problem, then flash up a message box, tell me the name that's problematic, the misspelled name, whatever it is, and the address of the cell where that name appears. Okay, um, and we can see Charlotte here in cell B9. We would expect that to be an error. But I've reset the code, and as we can see, uh, Julia, the name, is back in cell E11, and um, Excel's working through the loop, and the names in the list are going to appear in this cell. So we, when it gets to a Charlotte, we would expect it to stop, and then to flash up uh, Charlotte's name, and to flash up um, the address of the cell that's problematic, and that's exactly what's happened, okay? We can see the misspelled name there, Charlotte, and we can see um, we can see which cell uh, it's in. Okay, so that's that's as far as we're going to go in this video. So we started just with um, the, the top and the bottom line of the loop, and then we've put in uh, a line of code to work through that list. So it's taking uh, the value, uh, the va it's working down the list, taking the value putting the value into a cell, and then we set up a count if formula to check if the value in that cell um, appears in the name list, okay? Sounds a little bit complicated, but if you download the, the demonstration file, work through it yourself, you're gonna, de you're gonna develop an understanding of how this works. Really powerful technique, combining spreadsheet formulae with Visual Basic, with loops, to get loads of work done. I'll see you in the next video.